Today's shortbread cookie recipe is very simple. It only calls for five ingredients that you probably already have on hand. I think you're going to love it, so let's begin. This shortbread cookie recipe is one of my favorites. It's very simple to make. You only need five ingredients that you probably already have in your pantry, and it yields super buttery, delicious, classic shortbread cookies. Now, to get started, you are going to want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, you will need a large bowl, and to that bowl, we are going to add one cup or two sticks of salted, I'm sorry, unsalted softened butter. Now, if you don't use cup measurements, if you prefer to bake using weights, that's fine. That's actually my preference. I recommend everybody bake with weights, but I do have all of the weight measurements for each ingredient listed in the description below, so you can grab those measurements there. Now, we are going to need an electric mixer. You can use a hand mixer or a stand mixer, and we're going to cream our butter until it is smooth and creamy. This should only take a second because your butter should already be softened. So once it's nice and creamy, we are going to add 3 fourths cup of granulated sugar. We're also going to add a half teaspoon of salt. And now if you only have salted butter on hand, remember we used unsalted butter, you can actually use salted butter and skip the salt in this recipe. I'm also going to add one teaspoon of pure vanilla extract to my shortbread. Now this isn't necessarily a traditional shortbread ingredient. A lot of recipes don't use any additional flavoring. I just really like the flavor and so I always add it to my shortbread. You can make your own decision if you like to have that vanilla flavor or not. And now we'll just cream all of these ingredients together until they're completely combined. The final ingredient you are going to need now is two and a fourth cups of all-purpose flour. Now, flour is very easy to undermeasure or overmeasure, so this is another reason I really recommend baking with weights whenever you get the chance. Um, the best way to measure your flour if you are not weighing it is to just stir the flour that you are measuring from, spoon that into a measuring cup, and then level it off. You don't want to scoop the flour directly. You don't want to end up with too much flour or your cookies will be too dry and crumbly. You don't want to use not enough. They're going to spread too much in the oven. So weigh this is really the way to go if you can. So I'm just going to add the flour gradually in about three or four parts and stir well in between each addition. So once your dough is starting to cling together and all of the flour has been absorbed, what we're going to do is we're going to turn this dough out onto a piece of cling wrap. I'm just going to use my hands to kind of work it together. I'm also going to use the cling wrap to facilitate this because what we want is we just want to form this into a disc and then we're going to chill it in our fridge in just a second. So once your dough is a smooth flat disc, now we're going to take this to our fridge where we will chill it for 15 minutes. Now the dough can chill for longer than 15 minutes. You can chill it for overnight or even for several days, but keep in mind that if you chill it longer, it's going to be really firm and it might crack a little bit when you try to roll it out. So I recommend letting it sit at room temperature for a couple minutes if you chill it for longer than an hour or so. Once your dough has chilled for 15 minutes, now what we're going to do is we're gonna turn this out into a lightly floured surface. You'll want to dust the top of the dough with a little bit more flour, and now you'll need a rolling pin to roll this dough out until it's about a quarter inch thick. We're going to cut our cookie dough into shapes now. I'm going to be using a round cookie cutter. This is about two and a quarter inch in diameter. I'm just going to cut out as many circles as I can from the dough. You'll want to use a spatula with a thin edge to scrape up each cookie and transfer it to a parchment paper lined baking sheet. Now because these cookies really aren't going to spread much, they really shouldn't spread much at all, you can place them pretty close together, but I still recommend giving them about an inch of space between each cookie. Of course, once you've cut out as many shortbread cookies as you can, you're going to want to gather up all of the scraps and the remaining pieces of dough and then roll that out again to a quarter inch once again and just repeat the process so you can get as many shortbread cookies as possible out of this dough. So once you've filled up a baking sheet, these cookies are ready to go in the oven, but there is one other step I like to do. Now, traditionally, shortbread cookies are often pricked with a fork. It often has to do with the way that they're baked. It is not required for this recipe, but it does kind of give them that traditional look. So I'm going to go over each cookie and just lightly pierce it with the tines of a fork. Again, this is just for aesthetics. You don't have to do it, but if you're looking for that traditional shortbread appearance, it does help with that. 
Once we've filled up our cookie sheet, we will transfer this to our 350 degree Fahrenheit oven where the cookies will need to bake for about 13 to 15 minutes or until the edges are just beginning to turn a light golden brown. Once your shortbread cookies have finished baking, you'll want to let them cool completely on the baking sheet. They'll still be a little bit fragile while they're warm. Now, if you'd like, once they've cooled completely, you can de definitely drizzle them with a little bit of melted chocolate. That's one of my favorite things to do, to just drizzle or dip them with a little bit of chocolate, but that's not necessary. These taste good as standalone shortbread cookies too. And that is all there is to making classic, easy homemade shortbread cookies. I really hope you guys enjoy today's recipe. If you try it out, please leave me a comment and let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Mm. Hey, if you guys enjoyed today's shortbread cookie video, I would really appreciate it if you would give me a thumbs up, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. Also, if you enjoyed today's recipe, here are a few others you might like as well.